Hello again, doing an improvised build today. A section of ruined kind of farmhouse with a small wall around it and some groundworks that have been built up on the front as well. So to start with, carving a rough plan into some foam core using a knife, then cutting it out and beveling the edges to make a base. Then taking some more pieces of foam core and making a small building probably a storehouse or some kind of outhouse, then cutting away a section on each of the walls to show some battle damage, and then we can have the roof collapsed in over the top as well. To make a curved wall I took another section of foam core and lightly scored one side with a knife. Not cutting all the way through, because then you can just push it out and make a nice curved section. Take my hot glue gun, I then connected these pieces to the base. Taking some of the offcuts of foam core, I then built up some mass and a small wall around the front of the building, where we would have a small one-sided trench. Then taking a knife, I collapsed a part of the wall by cutting it away. To create the stonework, I took two pieces of styrofoam and a tinfoil ball, using the tinfoil ball to push a stone texture into each side of the styrofoam. Cutting this into smaller slices, then cutting it completely through the middle to create two sides of stonework. I then started gluing the bricks and the stones around the foam core using Map Mod Podge. The main thing to remember here is to do it in sections and let it completely dry and not trying to do the entire thing at the same time. So doing maybe two layers of brick, then letting it cure completely. I attached some more stones around the base where the walls had collapsed and I went for a variety of different shapes of stone so you'd get that kind of medieval scavenged wall appearance. Taking some more offcuts with the foam core, I built up a section on the side of the wall where I wanted some earthworks to be built up on the inside of the little kind of stone wall. Then taking more Mod Podge and some wooden coffee stirrers I started applying a wooden fence around the inside to support the earth. As well as adding a few details such as the inside of a door frame and some wooden beams underneath the rubble. Next up I mixed a batch of sculptor mold, then applied some general bulky shapes over the piece. Using a knife to trim out any of the harsh edges and make a smooth transition to the base. I used a mixture of a tiny spatula, but then later used my fingers so I could get a nice smooth finish. When the sculptor mold had completely dried, I mixed up a batch of texture paste using cork flock, black gesso, PVA and fine sand, using a sculpting tool to apply it over the base. It's a good opportunity here to kind of blend the foam core base into the above if you've got a harsh edge, and generally smooth out a few areas and fill some gaps. Then while the texture paste is still wet, I carved up a few more stone blocks and pushed them into the paste. Next up was to prime the piece using black gesso, 
and mostly focusing on the areas where there was still the white sculptor mould visible, as well as the brickwork. For the base colour I took a dark burnt umber, watered it down slightly and applied it all over the piece, on the brickwork and the ground. Using a pale sand colour and a light tan, I then gave a fairly heavy dry brush over the brickwork, kind of going for that yellowy stone type effect. On the ground I went in with a plain white dry brush just to pick out the detail, and I find this dulls down and makes a really quick and effective mud colour. I also used the plain white on the woodwork to dull it down and make it appear a bit more weathered. I wanted to try something new, so I took some fur trim I got at a hobby store and cut a small section away to make some thatched roofing. Using a pair of scissors to trim it down and give it a kind of rough tiered approach. I then gave it a coating of black gesso, followed by burnt umber, then using a pale sand again to pull out some of the higher details and give it a kind of mouldy straw appearance. When painting the fur, you also have to keep in mind the shape you want it to dry in. So poking it the other way with a brush to get some interesting shapes and not just having it completely slicked forward. You can also run a comb through it while it's still wet, and use something like PVA to fix it in a certain position, but I found that between the gesso and the various highlighting layers of paint, it had an interesting enough appearance. To add some weathering to the brickwork, I took a watered down green paint, and gave it a random dabbing over the stone. With the two sections of thatch roof dry, I gave them a dry fit, then trimmed them down into shape and glued them in using hot glue. They're still fairly malleable in this state, even with the paint on, but any sections that now reveal the white fur, you can go in with a black or a brown paint and just touch those up. Or it would be a lot easier if you used a black fur to begin with. Using both green flock and some green clump foliage mixed together with matte mod podge, I made two kind of texture slimes, then applied them over the base where I wanted some greenery to be, as well as a few places in between the stonework where there was a bit of a gap. To blend these in, I used a watered down black paint, followed by a lighter brown dry brush over the top while it was still wet to get a nice kind of browny green colour at the end. Moving on to the last and funnest step, I took a few tufts of varying styles and applied them onto the base, also using them to cover a few holes in the basing texture paste. With the tuft attached, it was done. So I've got a nice little kind of ruined storehouse with some fortifications in front. Something I can use in turn up 28 or fantasy setting. It's very kind of period agnostic, so it could be post-apocalyptic, could be medieval or even ancient world. But anyway, thanks for watching, I hope to catch you next time.